This is The Drive with Dale Lally and Matt Williamson on your 24-7 home of the black and gold. SNR. Steelers Nation Radio. Welcome to The Drive. It is a victory Monday here in Pittsburgh as the Steelers uh, take down the Washington Commanders 28-27 on Sunday uh, down in Landover, Maryland. Ah, that's worth that. Yeah. Not exactly in Washington, D.C., but... Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, um, great win, great win, uh, comeback win. The Steelers uh, overcame a, a ten point second half deficit. A lot of things to, to unravel here. The first thing I wanted to set, talk about, though, and I'm not talking to our listeners. I'm not talking to you. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to the national media, who basically slandered Russell Wilson for the, the past, I don't know, two seasons when he was in Denver, and then when the mm. Steelers acquired him, oh, he's washed up, he's done, blah, 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 he's a bad leader, bad, like, where are these people None of that's now? true None here, of that stuff is true. Right. I mean, I don't know how, where it came from there. I wasn't there. Well, I know where some of it, like Mark Schlereth and guys uh, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I'm not one to blame the organization or whatever. I don't know. I didn't think we were going down this road to start things off, but he's sure been a revelation for the Steelers. Maybe it wasn't know? Maybe it wasn't him. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was a team that is <laughs> yeah. the longest playoff drought in the league and Could be that new one. ownership. That, and... that got a field goal blocked yesterday in the closing seconds in a game that they were ready to win against yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs. And if you think about it, I mean, Wilson was a Bronco for two seasons, saw three head coaches. <laughs> like, maybe it's not you, it's me. Yeah, I mean, I, I say that all the time about the Bears. They haven't had a quarterback since Sid Luckman. Like, right. you think it's every one of the guys they've drafted fault, not them? Yeah. <laughs> and now they're going to ruin this guy. You think the Browns have gone through <laughs> 25 quarterbacks since they've been, all right, it might be 27 right. Right. or whatever, however many it is since they came back into the league since 1999 because the quarterbacks have all been bad? Right. It's, Do you think there's drama around the Jets all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> so where I was going with that anyway, is – yeah. Where you land matters. The team around Massively. you matters. The culture that's in that locker room matters. More so than maybe even the player. I mean, like, especially like draft. Yeah. You know, like, where did he land? Okay. I'll invest in him then or, you know, trust him. You know, not even who the player is necessarily. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind that of the position, same. Position. It's kind of the same conversations we were having about Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Justin Fields in, in Chicago. Oh, he was a mess. He can't do this. He can't do that. He comes to Pittsburgh. Right. Darnold with the Jets. He was Darnold much with better. Carolina. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of examples, right? Put me in a decent spot. Baker with the Browns. And we keep bringing up the same teams. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's total coincidence, but my 18-year-old is starting to really realize that. He's like, can any of these teams ever win in my lifetime? I'm like, Not consistently. I don't, I don't know. They may have a year or he- here or there yeah. where they, they, they you know catch lightning in a bottle, but it's never consistent. It's not, yeah, I'm like, yeah, you might all line up and maybe – because I told them the Lions used to be that team, and yeah. now I think they can win. They've changed but, the culture. Yeah, it's, they've made drastic changes. But nine out of ten examples, you're 100 percent right. It, it's board, really right. difficult to change the cultures, and I'll give Washington credit. I think they oh, are think changing they the too. culture. I think that's. I, I thought that was their own and only goal this off season: change the culture. Hope you found a quarterback with the second overall pick. I think they absolutely did all that. that that's yeah. a hard job to do, and they, it looks like they've done it. That being said. Yeah. Played a game yesterday. They played a game yesterday, and Jaden Daniels had his worst game as a pro. Absolutely did. But I didn't think he was bad. He wasn't. No, I'm not right, saying right, he right. was bad. He There's did, he did some really good things, things in that game. Yep. But the Steelers made him look as bad as he's looked all season. Yes. So I've done a bunch of shows already today. Um, and I think this goes back to the Giant game, too. Why Tyrone Tracy run so much on him? Because they didn't want Daniel Jones to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And people don't equate him the same way they do Lamar and Daniels. And they're different types of runners. But quarterback rushing can really, really hurt really you. Really hurt you because you're not accounting for that unless you are. Unless you are. <laughs> yeah. Unless you are. And I think a question I've been brought up several times to me already today is, does playing Daniels and then I throw Jones in prepare you for Lamar? <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's the other way around. They – we're good against those two because they know That's, how to prepare against the, Lamar. They get the you Lamar know, rules. Right. The, the, the NFC doesn't know how to deal with Lamar. The Steelers do, and they do the Lamar rules to Daniels yesterday. Yeah. He ends up with five rushing yards, and you walk out of there with a win. That was the thing that struck me. You know, I, I you get to the end of that game, and I'm looking through this. I pour through all the stats mm-hmm. and, and start looking at stuff, and I'm like, no tackles for TJ Watt, no tackles for Alex Heisman. Yeah, I want to talk about those two. But the Steelers limited – 
Daniels to three carries for five yards. Mm-hmm. Four of that came on one rush. Right. That, I mean, Patrick Queen looked like he was shot out of a cannon to keep it to a four-yard gain. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had 60 rushing yards. <clears throat> the running backs didn't hurt them. No. But it was because Watt and Highsmith are responsible for the quarterback in that situation. Yes. So if the quarterback never runs the ball, yep. they're not going to have any tackles. Because they're, exactly. they're they're crashing to keep him contained in the pocket and the ball and and that de- it deterred him from doing a lot of the read option stuff. If the if the if the outside mm-hmm. if your edge rushers are where they're supposed to be at, he's not going to tuck the ball. He's right. not, he's going to keep it himself and and run. He didn't do that at all. I Three think carries. you put this in your ten thoughts, right? Yeah. Because I've been saying a lot of the same thing today that. So his job in those read option situation is to read that edge defender, right. defensive end, outside linebacker, call him whatever you want. But they can play it so that he favors him to hand the ball off, right. which is exactly what they're doing. And therefore, guess what? Patrick Queen is also in those defensive meetings. He's key in the running back. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not there's it's not the foolproof plan or everyone do it all the time, but the Steelers execute it really, really well. And a huge thing I've been saying about Highsmith and Watt, and I guess we could put Preston Smith in there, but he's new, is they're such good football players, but they're really smart players and they're really unselfish. Yeah. Like if TJ Watt decided, I don't care about this team. I don't want to do that. I want to go get six sacks in this game. I, I want to then he'd get six sacks in the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he could set the sack lead if he if he played how he wanted to play only to get sacks, he'd have a million. But he's not. He, I'll eat up blockers. I'll do that. I'll maybe get an extra hit on the quarterback, and we'll win. Yeah. I, I thought the defensive – they gave up two drives in the game. Mm-hmm. One at the end of the first half that was aided by a couple of penalties on Joey Porter Jr. And you have to know that as Joey Porter Jr. going into that game that that crew is flag-happy in the secondary. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that Friday. Um, and McLaurin's good. And McLaurin's good. They made yeah. a couple of plays. And in the second half, they opened the second half, they hit a slant for 54 yards. Yeah, that, it was a big play. Um, oh, really, two that, drives. That, it was it was amazing. I mean, the fake punt set them up well. <laughs> they had a, 148 yards on those two drives mm-hmm. in total yardage. They finished with uh, two th- 242. So they had less than 100 yards and the rest of the game. Drives combined. The rest of the game. So while we're talking defensive strategy, we talked about how they dealt with Daniels, and he made a lot of contested throws. I yeah. mean, too. I mean, he made some tight, some window, tight, in, tight windows. No question. But I also thought something I've been a little critical of the Steeler defense is I saw more coverage variety. You know, like some of their safeties, they weren't just dropping into cover three. They, they had the most blitzes of any game this year. You know, I mean, different levels of blitzing, too. Sometimes it's just like a slow-playing blitz so he doesn't have a lane. But, I mean, they varied things up for the rookie. And we talked about it all last week. Like, he's not the average rookie. But there's a reason Tomlin – Beat rookie quarterbacks every time because yeah. they're still rookies, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know they haven't seen that stuff. No, um, they held a, a third. Uh, they held the ball for over thirty six minutes against know, a team massive. that really wants to uh, control the football. It's Again, a really by, good offense, really good Walker. offense. Yeah. And, and, I, and so let's get to it. That's one of the reasons why I thought they ran the fake punt mm. because they knew they weren't going to keep Washington from scoring the whole day. That offense is too. Right, I think they're trying to steal possession. Yeah, they probably went into that game saying we, sh- if we could steal possession here, that would go a long way. And if you look at it, um, Washington came into that game. I got to find. They had thirteen three and outs all season long. Yeah, they had two quarters of football. They didn't score points out of thirty six. Forty six percent of their commanders' drives this season had gone into the red zone. Yeah, so most almost in the league, half. I think. Right. Most yeah, the, easily yeah. the most yeah. in the league. And they settled for a lot of field goals, but they're still. They move the football better than anyone in the league. Basically. The Steelers held them. They, had, they held them to six three and outs on twelve meaningful possession on twelve possessions. Okay, uh, they were two of eleven in possessions that didn't start in the red zone on the the fake yeah, punt yeah, led to right, that. Right. So two for eleven. Two of the eleven possessions that they had went into the red zone. Wow, well, yeah, easily. I mean, you 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 limited that offense. It's by better far than their anybody worst else. Day, right. Yeah. I mean, they played some decent teams. I mean, that's by far. Th- their toughest day at the office. 242 yards you gave up in there. Yeah. I heard a lot of people complain about the defense. I'm like, I don't think you're looking into this or know the opponent. Yeah. You know, I'm mean, like, maybe they didn't have they a were million not, They were third in the or, league coming into that game in total yards. They're really hard to play against. Yeah. And they're really diverse and they're really well coached and they're physical and they got a lot of playmakers, including the quarterback. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that was, a, to me, that was what they did best maybe in that game. Yeah. I you thought know? it was great. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought they. Defensive they, front controlled the action. 
Yeah, without a doubt. And, and you know, if you were wondering about the run defense, you know, what are they going to do here? Well, it looks like they seem to have fixed some of the issues. Mm-hmm. And one and the, thing we threw the, out. Go ahead. The thing was that is on early downs when they were in nickel. That's exactly what I was say. Atlanta Roberts was out there. Yep. We, we, I remember us throwing it out like maybe they should try that. And, well, over the bye, we'll try a little something different, you know. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Made all sense in the world. But if it's third and 11 – he doesn't need to be out there. Yeah, you right. Know, we'll, we'll put the speed. They played out there, some dime. Right? They played some nickel, yeah. and that's when Peyton Wilson was in there. But yeah, it worked. Absolutely worked. I thought Queen played great. Cam always plays great, you know. But the front in general, I thought was really good. Benton had a really good game again, you know. So no, it was promising against. And I want to say this a hundred times against a high quality opponent. Yeah, I mean some of the offenses they played this year aren't. I mean the Raiders and some of these teams are not yeah. great on offense. This is. Probably going to finish as like a top five offense. Yeah, I mean, you, again, you held them to 242 yards, and it, well, it should have been probably 20 points, but mm-hmm. it just ended up. So let's talk about the the fake punt. Yeah, um, everybody was up in arms about that. How could they? How could they call that? How could they call that? Well, first of all, it wasn't a planned. It was planned but unplanned. Mm-hmm. You were only going to do that if you got a certain look from Washington. Yeah, they wasn't leave your like wide they, receiver wide yeah. open. <laughs> If they, they don't got, cover them. The, the, the Think jammer is an offense. The right? jammer with about five seconds before the snap suddenly runs in to go for the block. Yeah, leaving James Pierre out there all by himself. Miles Killebrew sees that they had talked about that during the week. They had practiced it. That's something Washington has done. Yes. They, they've put they put that had, on. They tape. put okay. that on tape. Yeah, uh, that they would do it in in those kind of situations. And so the Steelers said, "All right, if they do that, we're going to practice this." They did practice it, mm-hmm. and we're going to do this and. They did it. I don't have a problem with the call. You're being aggressive. Yeah. They're leaving your gunner completely uncovered. I don't care who the gunner is. No, I don't care who the gunner is. Um, and everything worked except for the catch. Everything was there except for the catch. Yeah. Uh, Pierre catches that to me nine out of ten times. And, again, I, I've reiterated this all day. It's like, how could you have a safety throw into a cornerback? Like, no, you have an athlete throw into an athlete. Yeah. I mean, that is not – a. I don't need the Marino out route. I, I just need me and you in the just backyard. Put it out there the right. and, ca- and catch it. And an athlete's going to catch it most of the time. He didn't in this instance. It wasn't the prettiest throw ever. But Killebrew has thrown a football before and can make that throw. There's no, and, there's nobody playing in the NFL who has not at one time or another thrown the football. Right. There's I mean, nobody. We've seen. We go to training camp. We're at training camp every year. or at OTAs or whatever it is. And you've got offensive linemen practicing fielding punts. Just mm-hmm. they're Just messing around fun. doing right, right, right. it, but, but they've been on a football it. field a lot. They've <laughs> yeah. caught footballs with their buddies. They know and, what right. this is like. They right. know, they've tried. Most it. of our listeners have caught a football, <laughs> and many of our listeners would have caught that ball. I yes, mean, even if he has cornerback hands, so maybe he was a wide receiver. There was and they nobody move within him. fifteen yards of him. Right, he'll be the first to tell you. I should catch it every time, yeah. and you should, and you didn't. Okay, that's why they play the games. But in a way, it's kind of like if it was second and ten. And they walked their corner out and didn't guard Calvin Austin. And you had a run play called. You check out of the run <laughs> you play. You throw it to him, right? <laughs> like so, I had no problem with the because of the look. I had assumed that any time we see this look starting in week one, we're just going to throw him the ball. I'm like, if you're going to be that risky, we'll throw him the ball. But apparently, a Washington is putting this on tape before, you know. So maybe yeah. there's a higher alert, you know, that might be happening this. Week. Yeah, it's, it's again. I can't. We can't. And if he catches it, we're talking about how smart. Oh, Smith is it's, again, it's you the know greatest I mean? play ever. You can't say, oh, because it didn't work. Oh, that's an awful play. No, and it's I, the right call, even if they're on the one yard line. And I've heard people say, well, you wouldn't do that if you know if you're leading down, you know, twenty-seven twenty, in and you're punting in the fourth quarter. Well, obviously, you're not going to do it then. I don't know. It's uh, a really easy play to execute. You're not, but you're not going to do it in, the, in a it's situationally. You're not going to do it in the, like there'll be. I mean, not if you're trying to close out a game. That's but, a, I mean, that's right. a conversation that, that, that Danny Smith has with Killebrew. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, he, they do it on kick returns. Danny Smith will, will pull the two kick returners aside and say, "Hey, we're I don't care where this ball's kicked. We're just going to down it." Yeah, people need to th- realize Killebrew's the quarterback, right? I mean, he's doing all the personal protectors, the checks, are tough and job. doing all the. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that center needs to know to snap it to him, not the the punter, obviously. But I wonder, Danny may not even said a thing to him when they walked on the field. I mean, this is just something they knew they from talked about. They have, special they, have teams a, they have a special teams meeting every Saturday morning. Yeah, yeah. And I guarantee you that was gone over. I'm sure. Like, I'm if, sure. Here are the situ- If we get into this situation and they do it, right? We're gonna go, we're gonna we're gonna run this fake. Yeah. I mean, Danny's not in his headset. Right. You're green dotting them or going. 
fake it, fake it from the sidelines. Yeah. You know, this has been talked about throughout the week. Because you yeah. see things. So right. we, we can't, you can't credit the special teams, which have been great this season. They've come up with play after play and came up and with one, another one right. and got another one. We're getting blocks and things of that nature because when you go for a block on it's a aggressive. kick, it's aggressive. You're not you're not setting up a return. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not you're not blocking on your return. Um, so that can go badly too. Um, and you can also do things like run into the punter and, yeah, and a, things of that nature. Yeah, it's easy to get a penalty too. Um, yeah. So if you're going to be aggressive, be aggressive. Mm-hmm. And they are. And they're aggressive on and special teams. And they trust teams. the Killebrews and Skoranix. That's why they have guys. these veteran guys. Yep. Yeah. I mean, weird little thing that we were talking about earlier is like. Remember when we didn't know who their gunners were going to be? You know, like we were having a conversation with with Wolf and Rob, and maybe I'll bring it up to him when he's on again. You know, wow, great job by Omar to go get Mike Williams and Preston Smith, and boy did that pay off. I mean, a hundred percent. But I'm sitting there going, nice job going to get Skoranek. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Kavich. You know, like bottom of the roster special teamers allow you to do these things. You yeah, know? not every team would trust their guys. And I had the conversation yesterday after the game with Skoranek. Um, and, and I asked him, I said, was that something that you guys had seen on tape from Washington? Had they been muffing punts? He goes, no, we, you know, I watched him in warm-ups. Mm-hmm. And he was struggling in warm-ups because the wind was swirling there. Yeah, yeah. So you just put that in the back of your mind. And you said a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of guys struggle with Corliss Waitman because he's a left-footed punter. So the ball is a, a different spin on yep. it. Yep. Belichick so, always got a lefty punter just for that reason. We've, you know, right. He said, we've seen teams struggle catching the ball from him. He said, and, uh, you know, and we saw and, we saw him muff the first one. Now he got back on it. Mm-hmm. He said, so. But Skoranek was breathing out his throat yeah, on that Pierre's, one. Too, right? Pierre's yeah. in front of him, or yeah. Pierre, Pierre's just behind him. He had fa- called for the fair catch. Yeah. So they did it exactly how you're supposed to do it. One goes behind, one goes in front. And when that ball goes on the ground, boom, you're the first two people on it. Side note, I've always thought about this and I laugh to myself. Like, if I'm one of those two gunners and the ball's still in the air and he calls a fair catch. What am I yelling to that dude? You're know, like <laughs> slap shot behind the net. Yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're mom, blah, 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 right? <laughs> like I could come up with the craziest things I possibly. I didn't could. ask him that. But right. Yeah. I, I wonder what is said. Like, do homework on his background. Like, yeah. Who beat? Who was his childhood bully that beat him up? <laughs> Bring that name up. You know, while he's trying to catch that punt. But yeah, I mean, so like once again, your defense and special teams. Uh, made big plays. Now their special teams also gave one up. The defense gave up some plays. Special teams was a wash. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but. You'll take that. You'll take it. But it easily could have been a huge advantage. Yeah. I mean, uh, but I mean that the the fake punt cost them. But it, it was did. bad execution. It was. I mean, everything was there mm-hmm. except for the final part of the execution. I hope they do it again. If the Ravens give you the same look, I would imagine. I don't know that anybody would at this point I don't anymore. No, why would? But yeah. right. I mean, if you see that, throw it to the open guy. Right. Yeah. I've yeah. often because you see other teams do that sometimes, and mm-hmm. I'm like, why wouldn't you just toss it out there? You're going to leave that guy. I know. It makes no sense to me, too. Like, the Rams did a lot of that because their punter was a really good passer. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even personal protection. That's the thing. That like, the punter. When the Steelers drafted Presley Harvin, one of the things that everybody talked about, he threw the ball one time in college. Mm. Once. He completed it, but he threw it one time. And I saw that play replayed over and over and over again. And people talked about, well, are they going to have Presley Harvin throw, a football, you know, throw the ball? Well, that's when you do it. Yeah, yeah. You don't throw it when, he, when the guy's covered. <laughs> Yeah, all you gotta do is just get it out there. We're not, it doesn't have to be beautiful. Yeah, we're not right. asking our punter to, to throw, you know, throw a, a fifteen yard out. Right, you're just tossing it out there for him to catch it. Mm-hmm. And a big thing, like no one cares if your kicker is a necessarily good athlete, but if your punter is your punter and has a history, typically of doing stuff has like the that, second best hands on the team. Yeah, I mean they're the holder. Frozen balls coming in that are you yeah. know wet and things like that behind the behind the quarterbacks, folks. But a lot of those guys are former quarterbacks too. Yeah, you know the punters. So or, I never problem with it. Um, no, we haven't if you're talked. Do that look, do it. We haven't talked about the offense much. We're going to do that when we come back. When All we right. talk with Rob King, uh, he will join us here on the Justin Miller Hotline. He's Matt Mil- <laughs> <laughs> Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lolly. You're listening to the Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back with more right after this. Welcome back. I am Dale Lolly. He is the Matt Williamson, and we're joined on the Justin Miller Hotline. Can we just call it like the JM Hotline. Then people think it's like sponsored or something. Uh, the Justin it should be sponsored. The Justin Miller yeah, Hotline sponsor. should be sponsored. Let's get to this, folks. Somebody, somebody, sponsor the Justin Miller Hotline. Anyways, we're joined now by Steelers play-by-play announcer Rob King. Rob was uh, down in Landover, Maryland, with me uh, and, and the rest of us yesterday. Apparently, uh, half of Steelers Nation was there yesterday, Rob. But sure once again, like taking over a stadium and. I, th- I thought it played a factor in that game. How about yourself? 
Yeah, first of all, it's Miller time. <laughs> there you go. It's Miller time. I'm just throwing it out there for Justin Miller from the Miller Hotline. Um, yeah, it was impressive to see, as it always is. And it always seems to come at the right time. Like, you know, you're looking around and you're like, oh, there's a lot of Steelers fans here. And then all of a sudden it's the fourth quarter and it's like uh, they've been beamed in. From, uh, <laughs> they've multiplied you know, from, while the game yeah, was going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. McCandless, Don't feed them after Lonox, midnight. Uh, you know, Norwin, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, West Allegheny. You know, they're, they're all coming in uh, from all over the Pittsburgh region. And all of a sudden you look up and it's like, it looks like every – second or third person has a terrible towel in a visiting stadium. It's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. All they needed to, all they needed to do was play renegade in the fourth quarter. And that place might've exploded. Right. 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 It it was, uh, it was wonderful to see. And I think, you know, definitely a factor. And and I think the thing that's cool too, is that free is that, um, sorry, I didn't let my dog out. (laughs) So she won't go out unless I say free. Um, so, uh, The, uh, of course, that's the, that's the code word. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's the code word. Um, you know, I think it's a it, it's a good uh, not lesson, but a good welcome to Mike Williams and Preston Smith. And look, Preston Smith is in you know Green Bay, and they've got a great fan base. But there had to be a whoa factor of wow, this is what it's like to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers and go on the road and see all these people at the hotel. And all these people wishing you well and all the people cheering the bus or if you're on the other team, saluting the bus in a different way. Um, but it, it's it's just different than any other fan base. It's just different. And uh, it was on display yesterday. And and both those guys had big parts in the game. But I, I just think that's got to be like, wow, um, I'm in I'm in kind of football nirvana here. This is pretty good. Kinger, um, we started the show by talking a little bit about Russell Wilson today and kind of the, the national narrative uh, that, that was out there when when he came here, that he was washed up, uh, you know, teammates didn't like him, all that, all that stuff that you heard out there. And we hear none of that now. Um, I didn't think he played his best game on Sunday. I, I, I looked at that like it was a Ben Roethlisberger game. You didn't play your best game, but you made the throws that mattered. At the in the yep. big moments, and I saw I, I saw every game of Ben Roethlisberger played, and there would be games that he would have like that where you all of a sudden they're down ten points, mm-hmm. and then like the he just flicks the switch and boom, there it is, and, and oh, that's the guy. Number him, yeah, yeah. I think that's a great point. You know, the narrative, um, and I, I always wonder, you know, kind of where that narrative came from. Um, I mean, I do think the play on the field. You, know, you have a bad and, – and, look, you can either ex- excuse it. It can be a reason. It can be whatever lens you're looking through to look at those two years in Denver and say, okay, well, you know, it didn't work out. Uh, but you had Hack at the first year, and he's just not even around anymore. And then, you know, you, you bring in another guy who's going to clean house and get things done his way, and you wind up as a quarterback and the high-profile quarterback having a solid season but winding up being the scapegoat. And so – you know, I, I was happy to see guys like, you know, Cortland Sutton came up and said, listen, I'm, <laughs> I'll play with Russ. I'm happy to play with Russ. And maybe some of that, maybe some of the stuff that happened, um, you know, I'm sure some of it, you know, there may be some stuff that Russell Wilson thinks, hey, maybe I should have done that differently. Maybe a learning experience for all. But when you come here and you get a fresh start and you do it with that little bit of knowledge that, hey, you've just been kind of nationally dissed for two years uh, and, and never had any of that prior to that um you know maybe that you know the throw in the super bowl uh was was about the closest he came to it but this guy's super bowl winning quarterback you know nine-time pro bowler uh married to a famous artist you know it's got everything going on and now you're hearing some criticism i just can't help but think that that has got to be a little bit of extra motivation for him and and then you come here and again we're reminded now of what you know, like you said, Ben Roethlisberger, what, what a quarterback of that ilk looks like and how, you know, Mike Tomlin has done an amazing job manufacturing wins without the most important, you know, a star at the most important position in sports and just what it looks like when you have that player. It looks completely different and feels completely different with Russell Wilson at the helm. And, and you and I were talking on a different show along those lines, and it's not all Russ, but he has a lot to do with it that – the whole football team, not even just the offense, can now play with 
so much more room for error. I mean, it used to be, oh, they threw a pick. They're not going to win this game. You know what I mean? Like, it was that cut and dry there for a while. Yeah, and I think that, you know, there might have been times um, in which you would have made a desperation fourth down call, you know, from mm-hmm. your own territory. Hey, you know, we we, we got to try something here. They made one, you know, they made that decision to go for it. Ultimately, it was the drive that Warren fumbled on. Uh, but, you know, they made the decision to go for it on fourth down in their own territory. Now, Dale, if you don't get that fourth down, I'm not sure you win that game. Oh, Washington absolutely. One first down, they yeah. kick a field goal, and you're down two scores with what? You know, five, six minutes left in the clock and one timeout remaining. That's not a good formula. I don't care who you have a quarterback. That's, that's not a good formula for winning. So just the fact that, you know, you have that faith uh, that your offense can do it and that if it doesn't work out, hey, you can call a fake punt. And you know what? We believe our defense is going to stop, and they didn't this time, but we got the offense and the kind of team that can come back. So I think that, you know, like you said, it's it's going to have an effect, guys, I think, on everything that the Steelers do. That one position. We talk about, you know, T.J. Watt having a trickle-down effect, right? He he brings up, you know, two offensive linemen have to block him, and somebody has to chip him. Well, that chip guy now, he has a harder time getting out in his pass route. So that helps, you know, the inside linebacker going out there. Maybe – you know, it helps somebody else in coverage as well. It's going to help the guy next to him who's going to get one blocker instead of two. Well, the quarterback does that um, in, in an even greater aspect on your team. He can, he can you know, change a little bit um, of what you do in all facets of the game, offensively, defensively, special teams, because you have faith that he can score points for you. He can lead you down the field when you need it. Going back to what you originally said, Dale, making the throws when you have to. Was that his best game? No. Did the Steelers score 28 points? Yeah. I mean, how often would we look at 28 points and think it was manna from heaven? I Four mean, touchdowns in the same game. game. Yeah. <laughs> 30 points a game with him at quarterback. Three touchdown passes. Holy mackerel. Yeah, four trips into the red zone. Yeah. You know, it, like – these are things yeah. like if you yeah, got there were games in, in the previous couple of seasons, if you made two trips into the red zone, I was like, oh. wow, they had a good game offensively. Like stringing uh, together two first downs yeah. was a chore. And and I thought right. the play that he made, the one that Calvin Austin got hurt on, um, he, he rolled to his left, got got some pressure initially and then ran back across the field to his right and found I, I believe at the time it was it was uh First and fifteen, or second and fifteen, at that point, um, and, and he hit Austin for a four, uh, eleven yard gain. Now Austin ended up getting hurt on the play, which then led to Mike Williams being in into the game yeah. uh, in the game. All worked but I, out. But watching that play as he scrambled around in the pocket and moved around back there, I'm like, that looked like vintage Russell Wilson. Like he could, he's mm-hmm. still capable of doing those kind of things. I know he's mm-hmm. not the runner that he once was. But he does move uh, move around out of pressure and things of that nature, and can still he feels it. Yeah, yeah can yeah. still escape and, and do some things. And the eyes are always downfield looking for the throws. Well, you know there there is a, you know when when you get the great quarterbacks, whether it's Ben Roethlisberger, especially you know if you're talking about mobility, um, but really I think if you're talking about any town in general, even if you said hey he's not as fast as he used to be or you know, quarterback X, his arm isn't quite as strong as it used to be. There is still the ability to, to put up prime type of numbers because you're just so smart. You're just so you've, – you've been there and done that. You know when to run, how to run. You know how to get out of a play. You know enough to tell Mike Williams, hey, you're running the hitch. You know, I just, it's probably not the first time something like that has happened to Russell Wilson. Uh, you can't replace that sort of experience. And so, you know, the prime – I think of the great ones linger lingers beyond what their physical attributes say they should be because of that game knowledge, that ability to make plays even without, you know, your maybe the, the skills you had and the abilities you had at your absolute peak. So we, we referenced the Broncos. I mean, Peyton Manning's last year in the league, he couldn't throw the football. I mean, like I mean, he threw had breezes a, last year. Right, in the league. he couldn't throw the football. Manning won the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, he couldn't throw an out route. I mean, he had no arm strength whatsoever. And the thing about Wilson that we'll never know, but I can promise you, is very true, is he just gets him in the right plays. I mean, even just coming to the line of scrimmage, he's not going to run into a nine-man box with six blockers. You know, like things like that. That 
right. just being around the block. That's right. That, that's that's kind of what I'm what I'm getting to is that you're going to get you know you're going to get the the point totals and the productivity and it's just going to come in a little bit maybe in a little bit different way. You know there are things that Russell Wilson um, you know can't do now that he could when he was younger, mm -hmm. but there are also things that Russell Wilson can do now that he couldn't do when he was younger. And a lot of that comes from just experience and being around the game. He's always been an unbelievable student of the game. Um, you know, great, uh, great um, work ethic and always been praised for that and his preparation level. But there are some things where you just need experience to get through them. And so Russell Wilson is at that point where, you know, he's marrying still very good skills with that experience level that, that literally can't be taught. You just have to go through it. You know, I don't care how much film study you have. There are things where you just have to be out on the field. And Russell Wilson's been out on the field. And so, you know, he's still able to perform and has been able to perform at a high level. Again, I, I do have to remind all of us, myself included, that it is three games, right? Mm -hmm. But these are the things, and, and so much of what you see is through the lens of, of what you want to, you know, perceive. But he is performing in a way that makes you optimistic that this can continue. And if this can continue, the Steelers are a different level of contender. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, just one last thing on Russ. I mean, drawing them off sides yeah. uh, on, on that final yeah, play. He's a rookie, I mean, you know. You, just, you, just, yeah. you, just knowing, like, they weren't going to run a play there. There was no play called. The only right. thing you were going to do right. is try to draw them off sides and they all sold it, uh, including Wilson. And, you know, you do that with the, the voice inflection. And, you know, it's really right. difficult to do that without, you know, flinching your head or something like that that's going to, you know, draw you a penalty. And, and, and I still right. don't know that Washington, you know, wins that game if they do get the ball back, but they would have had a chance. They, had a chance, right. they would have had that's a chance, right. and you took it away from yep. them with, with running a non-play yep. because your quarterback is – you know, it's, wise. he's wise beyond it. You know, wise. He's he's just yeah. been there and done that. It's probably I don't even know, but it's probably the tenth time in his career that he's drawn a team off sides in, in that kind of situation. Yeah, uh, such a good point, and that's that's the kind of thing he brings. And again, you know, the confidence, um, not only in the in the huddle, but the confidence again, Matt. He's going to get you in the right plays. And now the playbook starts to open up. Um, we start to see you know, why Arthur Smith is a highly regarded offensive coordinator, why Mike Tomlin is a highly regarded head coach. Again, like when I say like one player can have an effect on many different things, I think he does have that kind of effect. Again, I, I can't speak for anybody, but I mean, do you go for it? Do you, do you call that a fake punt on your own 15 yard line? If you don't have confidence in your offense, your defense and everything about your team, um, do you just, on a Wednesday, shut that down and say, we're not doing that. No way we can do that if it fails and survive a victory. No way can we go for it. You know, again, going back to that fourth down, no way can we go for it there because if it doesn't work out and they kick a field goal, we're down nine with six minutes left and one timeout. We don't have the offensive capability to come back from that. Um, you know, there, there's only so much time on the clock and you haven't proven you can score a touchdown. I mean, what are you going to do, just kick three field goals in six minutes? So I think all these things, um, and it's not just Russell Wilson, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's other assets in the team, other factors, other really good players that you have on your team that allow you to do that. But, but he is, you know, he's a, he's a key that fits in the door that helps you open up some things that lead to success. So I was really impressed with the defensive game plan. I mean, they had two weeks to prepare. Changed some things up. You know, Roberts was out there early in nickel. Uh, they blitzed a higher percentage than ever. From what I've seen, it looks like they varied their coverage more than they, they did before. And, frankly, they kept Jalen Daniels from killing them with his legs. And that stuff's not as easy as it sounds, you know, just to draw it up. No. No, I agree. Um, I, I think that, you know, and, and, again, there were times where the Steelers – uh, pass defense, I thought, especially in the middle of the field, was exploited. But again, the mm -hmm. other guys are trying to make adjustments too. Uh, you can't, you know, there's no way uh, you can have, you know, enough uh, enough fingers to, to to plug the you know the water in the dike. You just can't stop everything. No, you just can't. It's everybody would everybody would run that defense. Right. 
that's exactly right. Um, the 13 man defense. That's what you need to be able to do that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I just, I, I agree, man. I think it was a, look, they, they minimized Washington's um, running game. Really, they minimized their offense in a lot of ways. And there were times, look, in the second half, the commanders had excellent field position on several occasions. And the Steelers, you know, out of that, outside of that opening drive in which they marched it down the field, the, the Steelers did a great job with really poor field position. And the defense, you know, they gave up a touchdown after that fake punt. So, uh, I, yeah, I think, the, I think the defense did a, a really nice job. It was a really good game plan. You know, seeing Patrick Queen playing sideline to sideline, um, you know, I, I think that we're beginning to see, and we have, I think, for several weeks, I think his game – has just improved every single week. He really um, stood you know, out. Playing faster, yeah. getting used to guys around him. I just think, again, and then, look, I, you know, I would, I want to throw this out there too. The acquisitions by Omar Khan. I mean, could the timing be better? You get a guy like Preston Smith who comes up with a big play in the game, but now Highsmith uh, could be out for a little while, and so here comes a, a guy who's got sixty-eight and a half sacks in the NFL. And uh, he's your, you know, along with Herbig coming back, your next guy up. How many teams can say that? Uh, so, and then Mike Williams is that, you know, uh, you know, welcome to Pittsburgh on your first catch uh, for a touchdown. So, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things to like about this team from the way they're preparing for opponents to just the personnel that they have, um, you know, and I mentioned Queen, but there are others around him and others around guys on the offense that, Again, um, it's it, it it has a different feel to me, guys, than it has maybe in the last few years where you're figuring, you know, wondering how you can win enough one score games to try to squeeze into the playoffs. Yeah, I agree, uh, Rob. We're going to let you go. We appreciate you coming on, and uh, well, enjoy this win. You get your first uh, big Steelers Ravens matchup uh, next week. <laughs> looking forward to that one, I'm sure. Uh, yes. Uh, I am looking forward to that one as well. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. That uh, was Rob King, Steelers play-by-play announcer. And, uh, well, 7-2 and two with Rob King at the helm. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, anyways, he is Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back with more right after this. And we are back. I'm Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson, and this is The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. And, of course, you can hear us every Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. right here on The Drive, except you won't hear us next Thursday because there's a game. Ah, uh, right, 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 right. So, yep. that'll be right uh, back at you on Friday. We'll though. be right back at it. So, a couple of those this month where we haven't had shows because of Monday nighters, games. Thursday there was a Monday nighter or a Thursday right. nighter. So, yeah, prime yeah. time a lot. Absolutely. Uh, but now looking at the standings, you can also watch us on YouTube and you can download the uh, Steelers. Uh, Please do. Yes, the Steelers app. app. Couldn't find the word. Yeah, there's always good stuff on there. Absolutely. Your, your thoughts all kinds of videos, yeah. 10 thoughts, will download right to your phone. Yep. Uh, looking at the AFC now, the Kansas City mm. Chiefs are now 9-0. and <laughs> Seven of their victories have been like, are less than Close. oh yeah se- seven of their nine wins are less than a touchdown are they that doesn't surprise me at all I mean they're they so as Bill Barnwell ball, right? tells us yeah if you live on that edge that long now you have a great coach and a great quarterback right but you're going to lose some of those you're going to lose some of those there's no question but we we were in the Steelers camp that there's a reason oh there's Tomlin, no that. Belichick, they're going to win more than they lose yeah, right 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 obviously they've already got others. seven of them they're not going to yeah. lose their next seven games by less than a touchdown I don't think they're going to block a lot of last minute last second field goals to win it yeah. but they are uh, things are going their way to say the least i still think they're a really good football team they're a good football team they're not a great football team i don't think there's any great ones yeah to be honest with you. even detroit i mean they all have warts they had some pass protection issues and benito and those guys were getting after mahomes i think he got sacked four or five times that was noteworthy he was under a lot of pressure. we talked about that in our df when we put our dfs line yeah. because yeah. the broncos were the cheapest defense i'm like they're gonna get some sacks yeah oh yeah and mahomes will throw the ball to the other team mm-hmm. yeah it, it's they're an interesting team right now the chiefs i mean they couldn't run the ball very well but boy like their success rate is just so high yeah. you know every play they get just enough you know yeah uh, right now, they're Good atop the, the AFC standings. Buffalo is in second right now because they're eight and two. They got a game in mm-hmm. hand against the Steelers. The Steelers are right there at seven and two. They're the three. Sense. They would be the three seed if the playoffs started today. Houston, Bills handled their business in Indy. You know, yeah, yeah. Houston's the four seed. 
And I thought Houston played well last night. I think they're better now than I thought they were two days ago. Yeah. Uh, Baltimore is the five seed. That's mm-hmm. what's kind of at stake this yeah, weekend yeah, yeah. coming up. Then you get the Chargers at six and three, and the Broncos at five and five. The Colts and I Bengals. I have a little more faith in the Broncos now than I did yeah. two days ago. Yeah. You know, as that seven seed or six seed or, you know. The Colts and, and Bengals are both four and six. And then you've got the Jets and Patriots both at three and seven. Everybody else is completely out of it. What if Miami wins? They'd be three and six. I know. I mean, can we at least talk about them if they win? I suppose, but I mean, they got a long, I know. long, I know. long way to drag themselves back into that. Um, yeah, uh, if you look at the NFC, uh, you get real the... quick. I don't have any faith in the Colts. No, I, I know they're you know no. just missed or whatever. I could still still see Cincy stringing some wins together at least. But the rest, Jets are done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Detroit is eight and one in the mm-hmm. NFC. You got Philadelphia now at seven and two. They're playing really well too. You got Atlanta at six and four. You've got Arizona at six and four. Starting to buy into Arizona a little bit. Then you get the Vikings at seven and two in the five spot. Mm-hmm. You've got the Commanders at seven and three in the six spot. So right now, Philadelphia is a half game ahead of Washington in the standings. And they have because the same situation coming up. They play each other, yeah, so Thursday. somebody's going to get a loss. Somebody's going so the Commanders could pull back into the t- mm-hmm. two seed. Um, like Steelers, Washington was great, but the next two games for those, or next game for those teams is more important. Yeah. The Packers are the seven seed right now at six and three. Okay. Then you got San Francisco at five and four. The Rams are four and four. They play Miami when did tonight. Win go a long way. Yeah. Uh, then you got Chicago at four and five. Seattle at four and five. Tampa Bay at four and six. I'm out on Chicago. 100. percent Yeah. Could Seattle save them? There's a lot of good teams ahead of them. Yeah. That's the problem with the NFC. They're 0 and 2 in a division 1 and 4 in a conference. That's the problem. That's brutal. They have the same that problem really that Cincinnati. Cincinnati has. Cincinnati's 2 and 4 in a conference. Like Seattle has a better chance of winning their division at least, but I don't they're think 0 they and 2 will. in a, they're 0 and 2 in a division right yeah, now. It's not yeah. trending in the right direction. They're probably my fourth team in the West. Yeah. Yeah, they're in trouble. Um so that's kind of the situation right now. We, we've really seen some separation you could almost say there's maybe there's five se- AFC there's like teams seventeen team there's like seventeen teams or eighteen teams for fourteen spots. I would say legitimately. I, if you narrow it down to AFC NFC, I really only think there's two spots available for the AFC, and you take five of those seventeen out of the equation. I mean, I think all yeah. the division winners and. Baltimore Steelers, going Baltimore. to be in. Yeah. The Chargers are, at this point. They're pretty darn close. They're, they're in pretty good shape. Yeah. I mean, they have a quarterback. They have an easy schedule. All the tiebreakers and stuff work their favor from what I <laughs> their remember. Their strength of victory is still 298. I know. They, it's they, brutal. They, but, they but they play all the bad. beat up the bad They play all the bad teams, teams and, yeah. Right, they play all the fourth place schedule. They were fourth place, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were. And, Buffalo's strength of victory is 338. That's pretty surprising, too. Yeah. I mean, they lost the, their two losses are Houston and, and uh, uh, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Two good teams. All right. Yeah. So I'm not, re- I'm not ready to pencil in the charge. Or maybe pencil them in. I'm not ready to chisel it in stone quite yet. I'm chiseling in the Steelers and Ravens. The Steelers and Ravens will be in the playoffs. Yeah. No one's catching Houston in the South, too. That division's terrible all yeah. of a sudden. And I think and the Chiefs are in. Yeah. You know? So do we, do we think that. Will there be a 10-win team in the AFC that doesn't make it? No. I don't think so either. No. I think if you get to 10, you're going to be in. Yeah, because, like, I don't know if Cincy can get to 10 or Colts. I mean, I see a lot of I mean, they're not very good. And the thing about it this year, even if you get in as a wild card, I don't know that I, I would fear going anywhere on the road. Not that it's un impossible to overcome no like the, the seven seed might not be good maybe right. it's denver right but denver can just hung with the chiefs right i mean if you can play defense and not turn it over and you're well coached could you give buffalo a game and the ball bounces weekend? the wrong way and yeah. you win the game sure or come to pittsburgh and baltimore and give them a game yeah that's the thing to me that stands out if you look at the you look at the chargers you look at the broncos they're kind of the same formula. Yeah. They've, they've, and even throw the steel, like the steel. If I'm looking at good defenses in the AFC, mm-hmm. Kansas City's got a good defense. Yeah. Yeah. Buffalo's 
an average defense. Yeah, they haven't been tested a lot. But yeah. yeah. The Steelers have a good defense. Houston has a good defense. Yeah. The Ravens don't. The nice thing about Houston is they're getting Nico and Will Anderson back. Yeah. They could have used them last night. They definitely could have used them yeah. last night. But the Ravens don't have a good defense. The Chargers do. The Broncos do. Mm-hmm. Indianap- Bron- Indianapolis does not. The Bengals do not. Herbert's awesome, and he's way better than Pickett and Duck and those guys. Yeah. But the Chargers and Broncos kind of have to play that formula. Yeah. You know, where they just don't have a, they don't have a lot of stuff. weapons. They don't have they're a year away from that yeah. stuff. You know, like they, they could really use a George Pickens. Yeah, exactly. That'll be their first round pick next Pickens year. Pickens is whatever. a star, by the way. He's getting better and better every second. Anybody yeah. who questioned that guy, yeah, like just look at look at the difference in numbers between when Fields was in there, and I'm not ripping Justin Fields. Folks. No, right, right. But they're but, night and day. It's 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 a thirty yard difference, and it's it's the, the catch numbers are the same, mm-hmm. but the depth of target and the touchdowns are yeah and, much and this different. Is defending Fields, but Pickens had a remarkable number of things that didn't count. Yeah. Before Wilson showed up. Right. Too. Which would have showed up in those numbers. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he's been a star. So he's He's been great. I, I'm not, what I'm saying is, Wilson didn't make Pickens. Right. You know, Pickens has done this, this all This is year. what he's been. Yeah. It's who he is. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're looking at it from from complete team standpoint, the most complete teams are Kansas City, Pittsburgh, Houston, and Buffalo. Then, Buffalo's, yeah, Buffalo's, they're not terrible. They don't have weaknesses. They're not terrible in defense. Yeah, 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 right. I would say it's an above-average defense. Yeah. They're, but it's not one of the best ones. But Baltimore's kind of kind of the outlier right now. Yes, because it doesn't matter that you have a great run defense because the pass defense is so bad. You can just, it's so easy to throw. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, the problem is I think they have the best offense. That's the, on, that's the, the rub, right yeah. Now, right. And so teams have to. And so I don't know because when they played Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay ran the ball on them effectively. They did. I, I, I'm not sold because they that were able to keep it. Is, they were able to keep it close. I don't think it's Casey Hampton run defense. No, I don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I think because they put today's modern NFL. They put so much pressure on you to score mm-hmm. because their offense has been so good that right. you get away from the running game. Yes. Now it is a great run defense. I yeah. Mean, but I don't know that it's noticeably better than the Chargers or Steelers or you Chargers know. run defense was impressive. Yeah. Very. I thought they were good. I think their defense in general is quite good. Yeah. Much better than I expected. Anyways, that's where the AFC and the NFC yeah. stand right now. We're in great shape. Let's get to a break. He is. That's uh, Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. Uh, this is the Drive on the Steelers Audio Network, and that's going to do it for hour number one. Matt and I will be back with hour number two right after this. And we are back. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson, and uh, this is the Drive on the Steelers Audio Network, and it is time now for the Fantasy Football Focus. And uh, before we get to uh, into this week's top performers, Matt, our DFS lineup. I tried. I thought I made, and I, I tweeted it out, and I put it, <laughs> I put it on YouTube that I thought I was pulling tight because when Tony Pollard was active, yeah, I said, I'm going to pull Spears. Ty J. Spears out and was going to pivot to – uh, Pearsall, Ricky Pearsall, in mm-hmm. the flex spot, which was cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So you had money to spend. Elsewhere money to then. spend right. up. So I was going to spend up uh, from James Cook to, to uh, Devin Achan. Uh, it was only like a three hundred dollar difference, mm-hmm. but and Pearsall did well. Pearsall, been a good Pearsall goal, yeah. did well. Um, I must have not saved it when you I did that. Didn't I was, I was too too concerned with making sure I told everybody what I was. He texted me about it, and yeah. like I could show when the kind of like, like the uh, fake punt. <laughs> the right idea. But didn't I didn't. I didn't execute through. it. As it is, though, we, but we still, don't know what a chance going to do. We still have. Uh, we still have Tyreek Hill going tonight. Hopefully, hopefully, if he doesn't, we'll we'll flip over to Jalen Waddle mm-hmm. because Tyreek was the guy that we spent up for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could also. I don't know. Let me look here. That if that happens, I don't know if we'd have enough money to get one of the Rams receivers in the lineup. Well, where's our other spot? Uh, I'm just going to two guys open going tonight. Oh, you mean instead of Waddle instead going of, to Cup? Instead of Hill, we could go to Cup, or I'm just looking. We could I go would to bet. We could go to Puka Nakua at seventy one hundred dollars. Would you rather start Puka with Cup or Waddle without Hill? We we're two hundred dollars short of getting Cup. Cup. Well, that's what I mean, though. Like, yeah. but he's going to be on the field. Yeah. Who would you prefer if he comes? That's out what, of that's what I'm asking you. Okay. I, I I think I would prefer Waddle. I think because he would be the only game in town, right, right, right. That's and when 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 Hill hasn't been out there and Waddle has, Waddle has blown up. Yeah, and they're an easier pass defense to uh, navigate. 
They're in desperate times, too. I mean, yeah. I well, both teams are really yeah, they in are. desperation. I think mode. I prefer Waddle than Akua. Uh, so, right now, I'm, I'm going to have Hill in the lineup. Yeah. But if we get news tonight that he's not playing, then we'll we'll, we'll flip that out okay. uh, and go with Waddle. But what do we need, do you think, to well, right now, the money? In this particular one that we're in, um, we have uh, the, the leader right now has – we're forty six point eight six points out, but we're cl- much closer to being in the money. We're about we're about fifteen points out of the money. Mm-hmm. So we don't know what all the other opponents With, have. Going right, some of them have guys of left over. Some of them don't. Yeah, of course. But yeah, there's a lot of good eligible fantasy players. But right know. now we're in one hundred twenty first place, and we need to get in the top hundred. Okay, so we're in striking. So we, got a, we got a shot. Yeah, yeah. If we get again fifteen to, to twenty points out of Tyree Kill mm-hmm. or and whoever of course other people have, whoever we plug you know. into that. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming like. Some of the other guys still, some of the other players here still have players out, but there's also a lot of players that have already maxed out. They have nobody left. So this happened to Nico last night in a couple of leagues where no one had another option because it was. It's the beauty yeah. of DFS is like you can you can pivot. You can at least find somebody. Yeah, it's not like in in your regular you know weekly oh, league. Cups that, on my buddy's team, I can't just pick them up. You yeah, know, right. Of course. <laughs> so, I gotta, yeah. And then you're picking up like the the fourth string receiver or something like that. I just don't know enough about DFS. I assume most owners are on top of that stuff. Like, yeah. you know, that they actually go in and make the change. They don't start Tyreek when he's inactive. Yeah. Somehow I didn't I didn't save it again. Yeah, Whoops. you get on that. I, 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 I keep screwing that up. That's Maybe that's how I did that before. I didn't update the entry. There we go. All right, so we do have uh, Tyreek. Yeah, taking for the now reservation is the easy part. Keeping, keeping the reservation, the reservation yeah. apparently for me is a problem. <laughs> that's the second time that's happened to me now. Um, but we have done uh, – I mean, we're – we did okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Herbert, nineteen point seven six points. We paid. Remember, we only paid fifty two hundred dollars for him. He played really well. Yeah, seventeen point four percent ownership. Uh, James Cook, five point two percent ownership. It was supposed to be a Chan going tonight, but mm-hmm. we got fifteen point five points at him. Not That's a blow up game, us, yeah. But okay, Tyler Algier, fifty nine rushing yards, mm-hmm. but didn't score. Yeah, they lost to the Saints. Yeah, and they lost to the Saints. Uh, Lad McConkey. Two for fifty-two. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would have liked to have gotten more there, but he was cheap, uh, fifty-nine hundred dollars. Yeah, Tyreek was our big, big money. Guy. Yeah, eight point seven percent ownership. Uh, Khalil Shakir with six thousand, uh, six catches for fifty-eight yards, but didn't score. Had eleven point eight points. Didn't kill us. Hawkinson was the right call though. Eight for 72, 15.2 points for he a, looks great. A forty-seven hundred dollar tight end. Yeah, take that. Only five point. A five point eight percent ownership. I thought he would be a little chalky. I thought he'd be real chalky. He's he's about to go up in price too. Uh, we ended up with Spears in the lineup because I couldn't make. I didn't didn't hit save. Uh, he had eight point one points. He had uh, forty seven rushing yards, uh, three catches for four yards. No, but we'll take the three point four points. Yeah, yeah. He was out there almost fifty percent. Yeah, so it wasn't a terrible call. No, uh, but. I mean, him and Cook didn't bury us. Yeah, Pearsall would have been better. Pearsall had a touchdown. He had a touchdown. And, I think yeah, like he's eighty yards or so. He'll be more expensive next week, but we yeah. got to keep him in mind. I, I think he's going to go up in price and be a fixture on that offense. Yeah, we had the Chargers defense in there. They had seven sacks, yeah. um, seven, and uh, ended up with eight points. Only four point seven percent ownership on them. Yeah, against a pretty bad Titans team. Yeah, yeah. so. We, we, we didn't go real chalky this week. The, 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 our chalkiest guy was actually Khalil Shakir at 24.4% ownership. Sounded like all of our guys were fine. Yeah. You know, nobody but blew up. Nobody I, killed I think us. No that nobody, no, yeah, nobody was awful. We didn't take a zero. Right. Which has been a problem the last couple of weeks. And, and we didn't have – we kind of zigged this week and everybody else zagged. We didn't go with the chalky stuff. Yeah. Uh, although I thought Hawk would have been. I did too. Yeah. I, I thought he would be pretty – Yes, it's just been out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, I guess. Uh, looking at this week's top performers, well, if you had somebody in those Thursday night game, you were golden this week. No doubt. Uh, Burrow led the way with 428 passing yards this week, four touchdown passes. Uh, Brock Purdy, 353 and two touchdown passes against mm-hmm. Tampa Bay. Yeah, uh, he threw. He did played well. Yeah. Uh, got all the pieces back. That helps. Yeah. Like suddenly you put McCaffrey back in that lineup and Purdy looks like Purdy again. They missed three field goals, but yeah. other than that. And then – Debo, Debo went after the, kicker, the yeah. yeah, or the the uh, holder. I don't know who he was blaming I'm there. Not sure exactly. The long snapper had to break it up. Uh, Kirk Cousins, three oh six, but did not throw a touchdown pass, and they yeah. lost to the Saints. I, I don't know what to think of that game. I didn't study it heavily, but it seems just kind of like one of those fluky on the road division games. Like they hate I'm not they, off they the hate Atlanta. each other. Yeah, you know. I'm not off the Atlanta bandwagon. It's no, 
kind of like Baltimore losing to the Browns. Uh, Lamar had uh, 290 and four touchdowns, so only uh, three 300-yard passers going into tonight's game. Hmm, okay. Uh, Josh Allen, 280, didn't throw a touchdown pass, threw two interceptions in that game. Yeah, he did. Kind of kept them in it a little bit, yeah. but they controlled the game. Yeah, they won 30-20. to 20. Flacco had 272 on the other side of that, two touchdowns, three interceptions, four, uh, four sacks. Uh, uh, I don't know how much longer he's going to be out there. That's just – he's he, – he kind of like at this point, Jameis Winston. Just throw it and oh, he's hope. yeah. There's a lot of volatility to his passing. It might be great, might not. Yeah, he, I mean, even against Steelers, he threaded a lot of needles and got away with it. Derek Carr threw for two sixty nine and two touchdowns in that win over Atlanta. It was actually semi efficient there. I'm not jumping on Valdez Scantling. Right? No, I mean, no, no, no. Because he was, happened to be the only thing in town. Kyler Murray two sixty six and a touchdown. Of course, you get you his usual running as well. Mahomes was number nine with uh, two sixty six and a touchdown. Threw forty two times though to get there. Since they've gotten Nuke, his fantasy's production's gone up. Yeah, still they only run the ball well. They still only scored sixteen points. Yeah, and then number ten was Sam Darnold two forty one, no touchdowns, three interceptions. Three so picks, yeah. a lot of these guys who were the top ten passers this week. Didn't throw any touchdown passes and threw a lot of interceptions. Yeah, there was a lot of interceptions, I think. There's a lot of missed kicks. There's a lot of interceptions this week in general. The rushing leaders, only four guys over 100 yards. Hmm. Uh, Chuba Hubbard led the way with uh, 153 and a yeah, touchdown. Yeah, good for him. He was impressive. Yeah. This gave him money. Yeah, if you had a running back in that Carolina Giants game, yeah, you were the, happy the two starting that. running backs, yeah. you were happy there. Bijan. One sixteen and two scores. That's like four weeks in a row. He's been like a highly clear productive. Yeah, running back one. Uh, Jonathan Taylor had one fourteen. Did not score on twenty one carries. Had a fifty eight yard run in there. And then Tyrone Tracy eighteen for one hundred three and a touchdown. Had that crucial fumble. Oh, I at felt the so end. bad for him. Yeah, too. I mean, young guy. It's easier to root for. That's he was the right. reason why they were at, in that point to be in mm-hmm. overtime because it wasn't Daniel Jones. And that's one of the few bright spots of the Giants' season. Is they, yeah, they found a back. They kept throwing the ball in the red zone and throwing interceptions. And like. Yeah. What Jones you, was horrible in that game. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Jones just missed 88 yards, did not score at, along a 13. We, we talked about him in DFS. Well, he didn't play like the whole second half. Yeah. I mean, this came out, he's day-to-day. So he made – I mean, it, he would he was in line for a huge day. They were using him like crazy. Cook had 19 for 80 in the touchdown, so we made the right call yeah. there. Yeah. Ramondre, 74 yards on the 20 carries, didn't score. Bucky Irving, 13 for 73 and a touchdown against that San Francisco defense, which they're missing Javon Hargrave right now. Yeah, one Irving note, though, is Trish- Tristan Wirfs got hurt in that game. Yeah. So if he's out, that's Make note of that. a lot. Uh, Jameer Gibbs was somebody that we talked about. He had 19 for 71. Looked great. Looked great, yeah. I mean, explosive player. And then Derrick Henry, 16 for 68 and a score. Not the typical Derrick Henry game. They didn't give it to him enough. They didn't, and... <laughs> They broke their 100-yard streak. Yeah. They end up at 99. 99. Because Should... Lamar kneeled at the end. One more handoff <laughs> right. to Henry. They one lost more. one yard in the last play. They would have got 100. Good. Yeah. Because I know Harbaugh cares about that. Oh, so he good. definitely cares about that stuff. Right? Yeah. The only two streaks to already in the stat pack are the Ravens and Steelers. Both had a longer streak of 100-yard games in their franchise history. The 100-yard receivers this week, there were only five. No, 300-yard passers were down. Uh, Jamar Chase, sure 11 was. for 264 and three touchdowns. If you had Jamar Chase in your regular weekly lineup, if you had him in your – and same thing with Burrow, if you had him in a DFS lineup, I stacked one Thursday. I put one together Thursday night. Yeah. And stacked Chase, Burrow uh, – yeah, Chase, Burrow, and Gasicki. And I came yeah. out of that with like 100 points. It's massive, right. <laughs> so I, I talked about it Friday, you know, after that game. In our league, I have Chase – and Chase Brown, but he had Burrow. So I still need some stuff tonight to yeah. get the win. I'm in pretty good shape, but you would think if you had Chase, you're feeling great. But I'm playing against Burrow. Uh, Tylen Wallace had three for 115 in the touchdown. Don't run, yeah, out, and, don't run out and pick up Tylen Wallace. That was an 84-yard flukiest of all fluke yeah. touchdowns. I mean, maybe you'll see the field against the Steelers, but he's not going to get many targets. Yeah. Uh, Terry McLaurin had five for 113. I thought he played he's really well. Awesome season. I thought Porter did a really good job covering him. Yeah. Um, but next gen ch- charts those like tight window throws and things like that. It was a real high percentage. Yeah. So the coverage wasn't bad. It's just sometimes they just a couple of the throws there, you know, were right? really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, AJ Brown five for one Oh nine, but did not score. Didn't score, but he'll be fine because apparently Jalen hurts has to score all their touchdowns, touchdowns and not throw touchdown passes to guys who should score touchdown passes that coming from a disgruntled Barkley owner. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They score 34 points yep. against the Cowboys, who can't stop the run. They're so bad right now, too. And Saquon Barkley has like 12 points. Yeah. I mean, what are we doing here? It's not going to get the tush push stuff. I've got in our in our league. Yeah, I've made enough. Tra- I've made a bunch of trades. Yep, I had I had a pretty good draft, and I had lots of uh, extra pieces. So once we started getting through the buys, I started dealing away some of those pieces to acquire stars. Mm-hmm. So I've got Justin Jefferson, Saquon Barkley, and Brees Hall. Yeah, you you traded for Barkley and Hall, right? Yes. Yeah, and I think I got like a combined forty points out of that threesome this week. This is going to cut it. Yeah, but meanwhile, my top my top scorer is the the Giants running back, Tracy. Tracy, Tyro yeah, Tracy yeah, yeah. is like my leading scorer this week because I had to start Kirk Cousins at, at quarterback because Jordan loves my normal quarterback and he doesn't throw a touchdown pass. Uh, I wouldn't expect the Barkley stuff to change though. I mean, <sighs> he has to score from distance, which he does. But well, they could throw him so the football a little bit too. Yeah, he had one catch. That's the that's why he wasn't the top five pick in fantasy because we were worried about tush push and. The they need balls. they need more competitive games is what they need. It well, can't I mean, you know, it yeah. can't be a thirty four to six Dallas blowout. Is so bad. Yeah, they're just they're, awful, they're and so they weren't sad. challenged, so they didn't give the ball to Saquon that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling had three for one hundred nine and two touchdowns. They were both long ones. Don't run out and pick him. No, up. and plus in that Eagles game, like Pickett's in there doing mop up duty. Like yeah. I mean they they got the backups in late. They're playing Thursday. Although I will say this about Marquez Valdez Scantling, he has taken over the role of. Uh, our guy. Um, Olave? No. Shahid. Shahid. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, he's taken over guy, the Shahid yeah. hold. Well, he's also Shahid the only hold. show in town. He's also the only show in town. But you know they're going to take deep shots. They are. That's now, how they're constructed. will he catch said deep shots? I don't know. But that's – it's a dart throw on Valdez Scantling. It's kind of where I was going with that. He, and that's who he is, period. Yeah, I mean, that's who he's always best been. Day. Yeah, and he may not even catch it. Yeah. Shahid is a much better version of him. Yes, exactly. Kamara's like setting all-time records for running back – target share too yeah and i just saw on my phone like five minutes ago a blurb came off that they're not ruling a lave out for the year or i don't even think they put him on ir so that might be better news than we thought but i don't know what they have to they're not going anywhere I, it, he that's his second major concussion this year I, yeah. I i mean i released him in our league i get it with the with the new saturday i'm like am i gonna play him even when he gets back mm-hmm. i got some other guys that i could put in i'm like he's probably a an maybe starter for me at this point. He's not going to start over Jefferson. It might be a while. Who knows? And he might be out a month. Yeah, it might yeah, be a Tua yeah. situation. Could be. So, at this point... I mean, I, he's had five concussions. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not going to deal with it. Yeah. And, and they're a bad football team. It's not like he's been outstanding this year. No, anyways. he's been... A, he was a little disappointing for fantasy when things were good. Yeah. And then when things were bad, everyone was terrible. Now, I wish I would have traded him because the guy did trade Drake London. Uh, in this, yeah, I traded him in the Barkley trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, eight for 97. No, he's That'd been a nice, consistent. He's yeah. been pretty consistent. Yeah, London's a good player. Uh, on the, Darnell Mooney in the same game, 5 for 96. Neither one of them could score a touchdown, though. Right, right. Come on, guys. Uh, Juwan Jennings, 7 for 93. He's doing a lot of the Ayuk stuff. Yeah. I mean, he's out there close to every snap running man beaters. George Pickens, 5 for 91 in the touchdown. Yeah, get, get used, used to, to seeing yeah, that, right. that line That's for him. That's how he's played every step of the way. Matt Collins, 4 for 86. They've had, they they have other guys are hurt right now, mm-hmm. but he's kind of moved into that Coleman role. So, I guess he's an odd bird. Yeah, <laughs> my son told me a story about him today that he was late for a meeting because he wouldn't he won't get on ride an elevator. An elevator. He right. he takes the stairs. He takes the stairs, so he was late for a meeting. Which I assume that ha- I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, is their facility like atop a skyscraper or something? Well, he's probably late for the Saturday meeting. I think, and then I realized yeah, you're in the hotel. hotel, right? So I assume he's walking down all those steps. That's what the, that's like, what happened with the kid with the Bengals last week. Burton, he's, he's yeah. Burton skipped the team meeting the day before in the hotel. You're in the you're hotel. You're in the building. Yeah. You're in the building. That's why they bring them car, to right. the hotel <laughs> right. so guys don't miss the meeting because you don't want them getting stuck in traffic, that kind of stuff. Right. So even at a home game, teams it's a controlled will, environment. Yeah. Right. Everyone goes down to the banquet room, gets a snack. That's right. why right. you're in said hotel so you're not late to the meetings and he just skipped it. That's why Burrow was so ticked off at him. Like, how, yeah. do, you, how do you miss the meeting? Oh, everyone says how unlikable he is. Yeah. I mean, he's a really good talent, but that's that was all draft stuff. Calvin Ridley, five for eighty four and two He's touchdowns. He's been on fire since Hopkins has been going. Yeah, I mean, just in terms of they throw it to him every time. Yeah, uh, you had Alec Pierce, four for eighty one in the score. 
Yeah. I mean, with Pittman out, him and Mitchell are a little redundant. Yeah. But, you know, he's kind of that Deshaun Jackson all or nothing type guy, you know. James Conner had five for 80 receiving. Didn't do much on the ground, but he mm-hmm. did score. But he had five for 80. They're ramping Benson up a little bit A little more bit too, more, right? yeah. He's starting to steal some Especially carries. Especially in a game whenever it's not competitive. But now that they're, you know, kind of in it right now, they're more yeah. than kind of in it. They're oh, in they're it. they're very much in it. Um, they're going to use both those guys because oh. they're trying to win. Conner's like a solid high-end running back, too. Yeah. You know, that's great. Uh, John Mechie last night, 5 for 74 and a touchdown. Yeah, but Nico's coming back, I think, this week. And Woods is involved. But Diggs ain't coming back. Diggs is not coming back. I don't know if Mechie will be the three or not. Dell's looking healthier than ever. Mechie, at least, gives you some upside. I like him better than Woods. I I mean, they took him in the first round a couple years ago. They must like him a little bit. He was day two. He was a second round. Second round pick. But, yeah, he he was a a first-round talent. He was a name we talked about. Could Steelers pry him away? They also have the Iowa State kid, too. Hutchinson, or whatever yeah. his name is. Just a little crowded. Uh, Pearsall had four for 73 in a score. That would have been nice in the you lineup. You think he should be in every league? Kind of yeah. leaning that way. Yeah. 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 Uh, Hawkinson, eight for 72. Josh Downs, seven for 72. Didn't score, and, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, Donnie Mitchell had six for 71. He looks good. You know, I, I think he's going to be a really good player. Yeah. Uh, Trey McBride, four for 71. Cortland Sutton, six for 70 in the score. What That's, if they put Richardson back in, though? I mean, it's yeah, bad for Downs. Yeah, it's bad Real for, bad for Downs. Yeah. Although I'm, I'm open to the idea that, like Bryce Young, Richardson might, I'm not saying he's going to be great, but should be better than he was. You know what I mean? Like, maybe he's a little more functional for fantasy. Sutton, by the way, is another one that's getting huge targets. Ridiculous. Carries. There's nobody yeah. else. They, have, they don't have anybody else. He's fine. You know, right. Uh, the only other guy on here is kind of a outlier. Austin Hooper had three for 64. I'd have to see how that went, but it's and move the needle for me. Uh, Hunter Henry didn't do much in that no, game. No, he didn't. I'm, I didn't watch much of that game, to be honest. No, I didn't either, but it's right. just noteworthy that because he's a tight end and, mm-hmm. you know, tight end production is tough to come by. Yeah. That, Keep an eye on It's not like they have great receivers. No, and Hooper's okay. Yeah, oh, yeah he's had a good career. Yeah, so just keep an eye on that one. That's going to do it for the Fantasy Football Focus. He's Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Remember, if you're playing the lineup that we played, and I know some of you do, if Tyreek Tyre- doesn't play tonight, go to Waddle. Yeah, yeah. It's an easy – it's an easy switch. Or you can go Nakua, to Nakua. That's fine. I get free, it. Right. Yeah. Stamp approval, you know. You know, just been, do you think Miami's going to be behind or ahead? Kind of play it that way. Mm-hmm. I think there could be a lot of points. I think period. there's going to be points, period, yeah. 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 So that's, that's the play. Uh, anyways, let's get to a break. We'll be back with more right after this. And we are back. I'm Dale Lolly. He is the Matt Williamson. And uh, Matt, I was tooling around the internet today as I was hanging out. And um, I noticed that, first of all, the Steelers last week in in uh, DVOA were 10th in the league. Okay, that adds up. This week, after the, this was after the games where everything was added up from yesterday, they actually moved, fell th- uh, down three spots to 13th. And Washington didn't I, move at all. They didn't move at all. They were seventh, and they stayed seventh. I mean, it's a math formula. I, I don't get know how it, yeah. it works, but I mean, the Steelers, you would think, are trending the right direction. The defense is worse this week than it was last week. I'm like, I thought the defense played really well. Yeah, I think it did too. But I'm trying to think what would be the big I things don't know. against them. I, I mean, mean, they gave up some touchdowns, but would the fake punt hurt their special teams? That just a special smidge? teams is actually third. It didn't go down at didn't all. Didn't change at all. Hmm. I, I can't explain it. I don't know. I mean, sometimes I never look at the numbers. I just look at the ranks because the numbers are hard to you know yeah. decipher at times. Maybe the numbers stayed the same and people around them just moved. That, that could be I mean? the case. Yeah, that could be the case. Looking here at ESPN's FPI projections with their analytics stuff, it's yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of they piggybacked off of DVOA. They're now projecting the Steelers at ten point seven wins for the season. Sounds reasonable. Um. Yeah. Somewhere between ten and eleven. Which yeah. Yeah. Kind of what I thought going towards in. 11, yeah. Right. Um. But now a ninety-four percent chance to make the playoffs. Yeah, that adds up. And if you look at it, the only teams ahead of them are Kansas City, Buffalo, Detroit, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Houston, Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean Baltimore is the only one I would argue in terms of just percentage chance to go. They now have an eight point two percent chance to make the Super Bowl. That might not that's, sound like a lot, huge. but that's a pretty high percentage. Like, what's 
the Chiefs at? They're at 29.7. Wow, that's really high. Buffalo, they have to be the highest. Buffalo's at 22.8. Detroit is the highest, 33.9. I assume they just think the NFC is an easier path. Yeah. Okay. But if you're looking at it. I guess it is. Overall, so you got Detroit at one, Kansas City at two, Buffalo's at 22.8. The Ravens are at 22%. The Eagles are at 15%. The Packers are at 10.3%. Minnesota is at 9.9%. Washington's at 9%. The Steelers are at 92 So, really, the Steelers are fourth in the AFC. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how I would stack the teams right now. I would, too. Them or Houston stuff for me yeah. in terms of chances to go to the Super Bowl. Chances to go. Because yeah. you know Houston's going to win that division kind of by default. Right. So, but they're the going to host that, a game. The problem that Houston might have right now is that they're going to win that division and they're probably going to end up playing – the second place team in the AFC North. Yeah, I don't think you want to be the four. Seed. The four is not a good place to be, right? Because you're going to get Baltimore, or Pittsburgh coming to your place. Yeah, which isn't fun. Yeah, I, 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 this is just a total hunch. But as you were saying, those percentages, they all seem higher than usual. I mean, here because we are. I would say there's so much garbage. There's so much. There's so many so bad many, teams. Yeah, I think there's just more of that than ever. So the good teams have a higher percentage than they usually do on. 11-11, you know, today. To win the Super Bowl, the Steelers have now have a 3.5% chance to win the Super Bowl. They were at 0.1 when the season started. I remember looking at this. Mm-hmm. Nobody thought the Steelers were a Super Bowl contender this Yeah, year. I mean, like 3% is not crazy this time of year, you know? To win. Like, to win. Yeah. I mean, if you look at that, they're tied with San Francisco you at, would, at right. 3.5%. If I told you they'd be Those tied Those two teams are going and... the other way, opposite direction from each other. Yeah. Well, I don't know if San Fran's going the opposite direction. Now. Well, from where from they where started, they start the from where yeah, they started, yes, San Francisco, absolutely. I think, was the favorite. I wonder where they're at in the NFC. Like, if you were to rank percent chance, not I don't even care what the numbers are. I think we'd both agree Detroit has the best chance to represent the NFC. Yeah, they have an eighteen. This according to, to ESPN, eighteen point nine percent chance to win the Super Bowl. They're the favorite right now. Lions do the Lions. Okay, Kansas City second at fifteen point four percent. Buffalo is third at 11.9. Baltimore is fourth at 11.8. Then you go to the Eagles at 8.0. I was going to say, I wonder who's two in the NFC. Is it San Fran or is it the Eagles? It's the Eagles. Then you get the Packers at 5.5%. Yeah, they should be in the same tier. Uh, the Vikings are at 4.8%. The Commanders are still at 39 because they're in the NFC. Mm-hmm. And then you got the Steelers and 49ers at 3.5%. So the Steelers have a better chance than Houston according to, yeah, their, to which, their metrics. Which makes sense, too, because maybe they're hosting a game or they're going to Houston. Right. You know what I mean? Um, kind of a side note. I mean, just because, and I know mathematicians don't look at it this way, but I give the Niners a better chance to win the Super Bowl than Washington or Minnesota. I would agree with ben that. Because it's done it fast. I would, I, I would agree with that. And, you know what I mean? If they get there, I think they could beat the Chiefs, you know, where you know those guys won't. This is where it gets interesting. If you look at their efficiencies – their offensive, defensive, special team efficiency mm-hmm. ratings. The Steelers right now are seventh overall in the league, combining all three of those things together. All three together, phases, okay. With a score of 66.9. Okay. The teams ahead of them are Detroit at 75.7. This is just their stealing EPA. Is yeah. What this is, yeah. Buffalo is second at 69.6. The Chargers are third at 69.2. I think they're good on teams. They're second on uh, or second in defense, tenth on teams. Okay. Minnesota is fourth uh, at sixty nine point two. Then you got the Eagles at sixty seven point zero, and the Steelers at sixty six point nine, just ahead of Kansas City. I say that's a company you want to keep. I just mean, ahead of the Ravens. The Ravens are at sixty four point nine because why? The defense is so bad. If you look that at that, but really low. They're twenty fifth in defensive efficiency, which is really saying something when there's. The, when you're talking about the good teams. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's such garbage. I mean, there's 12 terrible teams probably in the league right now that if you're amongst them in any category. Ugh. Not good. Not right, a good place right, right. to be. Yeah, so if you look at the at the over, the over offensive efficiency rankings, Baltimore's number one at 79.5. Yeah. Washington, who the Steelers just played, is second at 73.5. Doesn't That's struggle. what we're talking about with that, with that Washington offense, folks. It's been very, very good this year. Like per drive. I mean, they consistently. They were averaging three points per drive. Yeah, it's really high. Per drive. Per drive. They were they were averaging a field goal every time they got the ball kicked to them. Yes, which is crazy. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, yeah. It was like the I think it was like the fourth highest since 2000. Is it higher than Baltimore now? Um that I don't Some know. Some of the Baltimore stuff's crazy. Yeah, that was that, that was from the stat too. pack that the league sends out. They were the yeah, fourth yeah. the fourth best offensive efficiency offense in terms of points scored per on a per drive basis yeah. since the year 2000. I know that they're ridiculous at having drives where they don't get points. Right. Which the Steelers did a really good job of. Yeah. You know, Forcing right? the three and outs and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were se- their second. Buffalo is third at 67.1. The Lions are fourth at 67.0. Uh, then you get the Bengals at 66.7. San Francisco's at 62.1. The Cardinals, 61.2. How uh, big is the Bengals discrepancy between offense and defense? The Pretty massive. They're fifth offensively, 28th defensively. So it's an even bigger... Them and the Ravens are both spread. They're kind of similarly built teams yeah, right now. Say, right. Um, and then you look at the Steelers, however, 14th. Offense. Offensive efficiency. So it's not. I bet you know, if you went for the last three weeks, it'd be even better. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? I mean, it's been uh, the last three. Since since they put Wilson in the lineup, they're averaging 30.3 points per game. Mm-hmm. That's 30.3, not 33, but 30.3. It 100% adds up. And so I had somebody ask me today on, uh, or it was on the message board from our, our picks segment last week. Okay. Um, one of the people out there who obviously didn't like the move to Russell Wilson, or yeah, is it, or it's just a, at the time. a Justin it's Fields fine. fan? I get um, said, "Are you going to talk about Russell Wilson's, uh, you know, inter- turnovers?" I'm like, which ones? The, okay, so he threw an interception he yesterday. Threw an interception. An interception on a third down. They have two interceptions. That all was year. the same as a punt. Well, that too, right. Like, you're just taking a shot to your best player, George Pickens. Mm-hmm. You're taking a shot down the field to him, and if you don't get it, it's a, it's the same as a punt. Yeah, not every interception is created equally. No, you're yeah, just right. taking a shot. And you had, oh, by the way, a, a <laughs> an officiating crew that likes to call pass interference and holding penalties. You're taking a shot. You're taking a shot. You yeah, might yeah. get one. Um, so, no, I had no problem with that in that situation. Um, they're also averaging 10 points a game more with – Russell Wilson in the lineup as opposed to Justin Fields. So if Russell Wilson does turn the ball over on occasion, he's also scoring more points. Right, right, right. You can overcome Th- those like things. Factor wrong. into this. Right. It's not like they're not the same. One interception just ruins the game. No, they don't That's equal the same way. Anymore. Does that way mean that, that you want up. Russell Wilson going out there and turning the ball over three times? No, absolutely not. But but he, even his sacks aren't bad. Right. You know he was under a lot of pressure last yesterday too. Yeah. They were blitzing like crazy. Yeah, they were. They were like crazy. Uh, so defensive efficiency. Minnesota's one at 76.8. The Chargers are two at 74.9. The Bears are third at 69.2. And then you get the Steelers are fourth at 67.8. Hmm. Okay. Wow. I'm, I'm a little shocked the Bears are still that high. So you're, But you're not that far. You're only t- less than 10 points off the lead. Yeah, with, you're still. For defensive efficiency. Them. Top stuff. Yeah. So, they, I mean, they're doing a good job on that side of the ball. Yeah, you're giving up some stuff. But, like, even yesterday, one of those touchdowns is you get, they get the ball to, at the, what, 14. Assuming their, their efficiency stuff that you're looking at is similar to EPA, big plays help a lot more as opposed to, like, success rate is yeah. down in, down out type of thing. Steelers aren't great in that neighborhood. They're not bad, but they're not great. Yeah. But the big play stuff is huge. But even you're still, you're, you're, being down. like even yesterday, you forced a three and out six times. Yeah, that was pretty. That that helps. Especially against that offense against, we were talking about earlier. That's yeah. not what they do at all. Against that offense. Likewise, again, you know, we know Baltimore was number one. So the leader in defensive efficiency, 76.8. The Steelers are at 67.8. You got to go all the way down to... 25 to find the Ravens at 43.3. Tied with the Cardinals. Wow. The Cardinals. In fact, if people were talking about how, how tough it is to play against the AFC North teams this year, mm-hmm. Cleveland's 23rd. Their the, defense is 45.6. And the Bengals are pretty low, too. And the Bengals are actually below the Ravens at 40.4. It doesn't shock Carolina's me. Carolina's dead last at 32. You're, not, <laughs> you're much closer to that than, than you, that than the thought. It doesn't shock me that the Steelers have a good defense. It shocks me that the rest of the division doesn't. Doesn't. That's the <laughs> big know, thing. Right. That's the, I, I Since mean, he was bad last year, yeah. but I thought it'd be better this year, or at least be a, a tier above where they were. Yeah. 
man, I mean, the defense and, and, and the Browns are not horrible, but they're tiers below where they were. Right. I mean, they're know? nowhere close to what they were last year. They were year. like one last year or two. They're know, playing. Right? So it was a Ravens. It's, it's Ravens ba- really things bad. have balanced out because their home road splits were so that was just completely weird. different. Now yeah. they've kind of met in the middle this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas last year they get, they gave up like 12 points per game at home and 28 points per game on the road. It was weird, yeah. Now it's it's more like 20 points kind of per like game. Somewhere in between. Yeah. Them, yeah. Um, which I guess kind of makes sense because. Yeah. I mean, there's such small sample sizes. That's probably who you are. Just happened to play better at, in one building than the other. Yeah. Um, but the biggest difference this year, the Steelers special teams unit. Detroit leads the way at 69.8. Mm-hmm. Been really good on special teams. Dallas is good too, right? No. Uh, they're okay. Mm, I thought they were near the top. They are. There are in DVOA. If you look yeah, at the okay. DVOA yeah. rankings, the Steelers are second at sixty-eight point six. They're not that far off the lead. No, I wouldn't think. Then you got New England sixty-four point five. Denver at sixty-four point two. That's a hidden thing about Denver. Yeah, that keeps them hanging around. Yeah. Tampa Bay's five. Cleveland is six, sixty point three. They played. Good, they played well on special teams. Everything yeah. else has been a, a dumpster fire. Uh, Jacksonville. Dallas, New Orleans, and then the Chargers. The Chargers are Chargers are doing all the Harbaugh, all the this winning in the margins. Exactly, it's, it's winning it's in good the margins. Coaching. It's yeah. much like the Steelers were when they didn't have Wilson. You know, where where are the Ravens on special teams? The Ravens are twenty second. I bet 40, it's not great. Forty five point nine. I mean, Tucker's missed four or five kicks. Closer to the bottom than they are the top. In terms of even like the, the the worst team in the league on special teams, the Miami Dolphins at thirty two point two. Ooh, keep an eye on that tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know we're not going down this path, but we're talking about winning the margins. Ravens are the worst penalty team yeah. by far. They used the to league. they used to do that. They used to, I mean once they got across midfield, oh well they're in field goal range they're for Tucker. Range That's right. not the case anymore. No, I mean they they have some the stuff in the margins. Was, that their aren't punters good. were always outstanding. Oh yeah, the return they guys were always dangerous. Tucker, yeah, but yeah, they were always solid. Not many penalties. You know, yeah, you're right. I mean, a lot of defensive breakdowns, a lot of penalties, a lot of things that don't you know, don't always show up. You know, in the box score that has why do you lose the Raiders? Why you know like or why do you let these guys come back? You know, so. Their offense is unbelievably good, but some of the stuff that Harbaugh is usually good at isn't great. Yeah, you know? it's got to be driving him nuts. I bet it's making him ball because yeah. he knows better. I mean, yeah. right? He was a special teams coach. That's yeah. what, that's yeah, what yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah, he was a coordinator yeah. before he became a head coach. So you know, when that side of the ball stinks, as this does, and the defense does, like these are this these aren't your father's Ravens. No, it's outscore you, run and gun. Yeah, basically. Um, and. You feel a little bit better right now, and this is why the Steelers did make the move to Russell Wilson, because they're scoring points now. Oh yeah, you know when people said Tomlin doesn't like to score points. No, he does. Oh, he likes scoring. <laughs> when points. he has a quarterback, he trusts. He's going to go out and try to score points. They did it when they when Ben Roethlisberger and the Killer Bees were at the height of their powers. They scored with anybody. Remember mm-hmm. that was that was when Todd Haley came out and said hey, our goal is to score thirty points a game every week. Yeah, and that wasn't outlandish. No, I mean that's what they they had that type of guys. Yeah, they first round pick fantasy guys. So a more traditional stat though that shows how good Baltimore's offense is: seven point one yards per play on offense. Far and away, it's first. I mean the Niners are second at six yeah. five. The Packers at six one are the only one the other team over six. Like six yards per play every time you snap the ball is crazy, let alone seven point one. I mean, so they're doing it all on that side of the ball. Yeah, but the other stuff's bad. That's why you know when you look at that game yesterday against the Commanders, the Steelers gave up four point one yards per play in that game. You'll take that all day long against that. Team. Against that, right? I mean that that was an outstanding defensive effort. If they keep it to five against the Ravens, I would take it. Yeah, I, I mean, no question. So. Folks, when you're watching the game on Sunday, Baltimore's going to make some plays offensively. They're going to move the ball. They're going to move the football. They're they're better at it than anyone in the league. Yeah, seven point one yards per play. The only the team that is second has been, or in that top three, has been mm-hmm. Washington. They probably were close this week. Didn't help. Yeah, yeah right, they, right, they right. probably moved down a little they bit. Did, they did. Yeah. Um, so the Steelers know how to defend these kind of teams. They've just done it, and then similar type of quarterback yeah. too, in the way that they're built. And defensively, you know, so you expect them to. You're not going to win every down. You're going to, no. but to hold your own. You got to hold your own. You get. You can't let the Ravens score time after time. Much like you couldn't do that against Washington. Yeah. Washington was going to score some points. That's why Tomlin was aggressive with the fake punt. Yeah, 
Like, I mean, look, we're going to try to steal possession here. If there's back-to-back drives, like, happen to him going into uh, halftime and coming out that don't go your way, okay. Can't be like that the whole game, though. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, and this is what I thought was critical when I talk about stealing a possession. The Steelers had 14 possessions in that game on Sunday. Washington had 12. Huge. Huge. They stole a possession. They stole a possession. I mean, if Washington's averaging three yards of, or three points of possession, that's six points. Right. You, you know, yeah. I mean, on average, you know, right. So that stuff's unbelievably important. And they were able to do that in a game that they turned the ball over twice. I say they weren't perfect either. I mean, they they gave up, you know, they, they, Washington stole a possession here and there too. You know? Yeah. So um, now one of those was an end of the half taking a knee, but you still yeah, had yeah, more yeah, possessions. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think this is going to be an interesting matchup this week. I thought oh, yeah, last week's matchup was an interesting matchup. Obviously, we know more about the Ravens mm-hmm. than we do the Commanders. Yeah. Um, I not... learned a lot about the Commanders last week, yeah. and it was almost all positive. Yeah. You know, this I mean, time they're last going week, good I'm things. like, they're good. They're a nice story. But as the week went on, I'm like, they're really good. Yeah. yeah I mean, especially the offense. Yeah. So I just thought that was interesting that the FPI thing, you know, when you look at those efficiency ratings on, mm-hmm. on ESPN, I'm going to put a ton of, of weight into it. Yeah. Not like I do DVOA and things of that nature, but it's a tool. It's a tool to, to look at things uh, through. And, um, you know, again, I, I think the Steelers have positioned themselves well. Um, I don't think that, and I haven't thought all along, that they're going to go 0 and 6 in the division. No. Like people, people, you still see it. The Steelers still have all, all six of their AFC North games remaining. Yeah, but I they, don't know that that's they went, bad. They went five and one in the AFC. Like everybody, nobody right, says right. that. Nobody says the Steelers have. They're all six of their AFC North games remaining. But oh, by the way, haven't had a losing record in the AFC North in forever. Yeah, I mean, obviously those games are more important. Yeah, they weigh more. But the Ohio teams aren't as good as we thought they'd be. No, and yeah, they still know, have a bunch of their AFC. Yeah, there's North still games. a ton of AFC North games yeah, coming up. So. Right. Keep that in mind. But let's get to a break. We're overdue for that. He is Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. We'll be back to finish up the show right after this. And we're back. I'm Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And uh, just uh, something that just happened here, Matt, the uh, Seahawks wave leading tackler, tackler Terrell Dodson, inside linebacker, who they signed in the offseason yeah. uh, from the Buffalo Bills. It's an odd move. He's their leading tackler. Yeah, he's an every down linebacker. Uh, he had seventy six tackles and a couple of sacks, and he's made plays for them. And they just said, you know what, we don't need him anymore. And it's not like they're saving a ton on the cap or anything like that. It's I don't know if it's a two saving year anything deal or a one it's year a one year deal. deal. The one year deal, one year four uh, four point two six million dollars. He's going to end up back in Buffalo. I would think. I'm not spreading rumors, but I wonder if he did something off the field. We're going to find out about because that this doesn't add up. All well, they that did well. the same thing though a couple of weeks ago. They signed Jerome Baker in the off season mm-hmm. and then traded him for Ernest Jones and gave up more to get Jones. That's yeah. what I was going to say is they Jones is their guy. I mean, Jones is the one that they want. He's their every down green dot dude. And I forget who it was, but they drafted someone in the third or fourth round that was kind of a no-name dude. I, I was shocked when they took him as high as they did. But they have added two linebackers and lost Baker since signing Bernard. Yeah. Strange, though. Weird. Weird. Yeah. Um, and like you mentioned off the air, you couldn't have got a seventh-round pick for him a week ago? You could ago? have traded him a week ago when yeah, right. somebody would have given you something. And again, I wonder if he did something. If he was a bad boy between now and then. Well, they were playing him. They moved him to weak side linebacker from middle linebacker. Mm-hmm. And maybe just. But in their nickel, he's one of the two. Yeah. You know. They were off this week, I think. Yeah, they were. Maybe yeah, not. they did a little self scouting and decided they didn't want to didn't want to deal with him anymore. Yeah. Maybe he's no fun to be around. I don't know. I don't know. He could have known. That's kind of some of the things you deal with when in free agency. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you see the Browns? Jedrick Willis called his Wills. Re- or Wills. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, now it's in my head. Uh, Jedrick Wills called his recent bench benching pretty shocking. So they they took uh, Jedrick Wills. And he said it was he made a business decision recently to sit out a recent game because of an, a knee injury, and uh, I did they not then see any of this. they then moved Daywan Jones from right tackle to left tackle and Conklin back at right. And now Wills has been benched permanently. I know he's up after this year. They did not pick or they did pick up his fifth year option, but I know he's up after this year. Yeah, um, this is more disarray in Cleveland to say the least. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he's I, been a little disappointing since they drafted him. He's oh, not a yeah. starter, but he's I, I thought he was going to be better than that coming out of school. Yeah, Kevin Stefanski told him he would no longer start, but will instead serve as the swing tackle. Uh, so he was ba- the backup uh, for their game against the Chargers a few weeks ago. Jedrick, 
But I'm thinking more big picture. The Browns aren't winning anything this year, and Wilson. Daywan Jones be back. is not a left tackle. That's my point. It's yeah. like that's one of the few things you kind of have going for you. Why mess with Jones? Right. But who Conklin's, else will play left tackle? Conklin's, Conklin's not going to be, be back. No, either. he's right. the guy that's making all the money, and you're not going to bring him back next year when you need cap space. And he's a right tackle only, and I can understand you're not going to make Conklin your left tackle either, and somebody has to play the position. But it's not good for Jones. You well, just continue, a new problem. continue to start Wills. If Unless they just live with them. Yeah. I mean, you played Watson. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just selective. Right, right. Is he a bigger problem than your quarterback that got hurt? I bet not. Yeah. yeah um, that's weird. Just weird. Is Stefanski going to be the head coach there next year? No. I don't think so either. I don't I'm not even so. sure it's his fault. I never thought he's a two time coach of the year type coach either, but. I think there's going to be more coaching changes than ever. I bet I could come up with 12 teams that might make a coaching change. Yeah. Uh, the Dolphins today placed uh, starting right tackle Austin Jackson on injured reserve. Uh, Their line's not great. A knee injury. With, right. Um, he'll miss in, at least the next four games. So they're going to go with uh, either Kendall Lamb or Patrick Paul at right okay. tackle. Paul's not ready. No. They've been very fortunate. Armstead's been great this year, and he's actually played. But he's never completed a season in his life. So I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, if you lose your left tackle, if that's on the horizon, oh boy. The Rams, meanwhile, getting uh, Austin, or I'm sorry, Jonah Jackson and Steve Avia yeah, back on their line. Yeah, they're starting to get line. healthy. Cup just came back. You know, like yeah. there's, there's some good mojo there with some the of these guys that they were without. I think here, they're all so. playing tonight, right? Yeah. So their offensive line getting a little bit more healthy. Yeah. Whereas the I'm leaning more and more towards the Rams tonight. Yeah. But I think I think you're right. There's gonna be a lot of points. For some reason my laptop just shut down on me. No, oh, well, why? I'm sure we could come with something to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I'm just going to close it up. Let's, let's that's, just that's chat, that's Very Matt. liberating. Let's just chat. What do you want to chat about, there? I don't know. <laughs> um, Steelers yeah. looked good yesterday. Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably close out the, the show talking about that. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was a big win to go on the road yeah. against a, a good opponent. Mm-hmm. We, again, when we were talking, somebody in our comments uh, after our pick segment uh, on the uh, on Friday, said you guys were disrespectful to the Commanders. I'm like, we both picked it to be a close game. I don't I think so. Right. Just because we didn't pick the Commanders to win doesn't right. mean we didn't think it was. You know, I you think were you back were and similar. forth. You were back and forth all week long. I was. I picked the Steelers to win by three. I wasn't too far off. It was in the twenties. I took 23, 26 Steelers. I had twenty seven, twenty Steelers. And yeah, I wasn't we weren't, that far we off. Weren't far off. No, I mean, not only was it was disrespectful. We said a lot of good things about the. Commanders throughout the week, especially later and later in the week going on, and the more homework I did, I was in, impressed with them. But yeah. one thing you said going into that game, I think that absolutely holds true, is I thought both those coaches had pretty strong Coach of the Year resumes yeah. going in. And I'm not saying that, you know, Quinn's not out, he's of, not out yeah. of it, but nice feather in Tomlin's cap. They win too. the NFC East, he's probably going to win the award. Yeah, I would think. I would think. I think Arizona's got a case too. He's I got mean, a case. Over a cheat even. It, the other thing. So if Andy Reid, if, if if somehow they go unbeaten, they go undefeated, or I mean, I don't think they will. A long way. I don't think they will. I think they're right. gonna they're gonna trip up at some point. Maybe. Oh, I do. Too. Maybe twice. They're not. I, I do too. I don't see them. It's really hard to win seventeen games. I don't think they'll win sixteen. Yeah. You know, like I'd put their they over might go under, fifteen and two, which is awesome. Which is a great and season. You'll still be the number one seed. Right, yeah. Right, right. And if I'm them. I would rather three peat than go undefeated too. Yeah. Like if it's do we rest guys at the end to get a win or any of that stuff, I would be hesitant. Well, I saw on uh, on NFL Network this morning one of the one of the networks. I can't remember. I was watching a bunch of different stuff and and they said Chiefs win again on their way to a three peat. Like they're not. Yeah, it's so early that, for that. That's, yeah, let's right, not right, right. let's not put the cart of, of, in front of the horse here. Right. I know tomorrow's power ranking day, and if if they haven't won, I understand they're undefeated. But I don't know that they're a distant one. I know they're not a distant yeah. one. You know, I, I actually would probably have Detroit ahead of them. Detroit was pretty impressive last night to overcome five t- five picks. Yeah, I mean they did not play their best early on. That's for sure. Yeah, and still found a way to win. Yeah, they're... that's a culture thing. It is. It makes Just like the Steelers that... winning that game yesterday it was a culture thing. And I know it's kind of fluky, but same with the Chiefs. I mean, you block a kick to culture win this things. thing. You know, right? Those are culture like, things. Yeah, it feels like the Chiefs and Lions are kind of their year. They're kind of inevitable. But I don't think either one's great. Yeah. But, uh, that's going to do it for the show today, Matt. Mm-hmm. Um, Fun talking about wins. Yeah, absolutely. I know everybody. We get more Let's hits when people talk about day. more listens, more eyeballs, the whole deal when, when the Steelers win. Um, they win a lot. I wonder if that's true after – because now you know it's a successful season, basically. You know, like it'd be easy to be a roller coaster early, like, ah, oh, they lost, they're going to be bad. 
but you know they're good. <laughs> I mean, if they yeah. happen to lose by one to Baltimore, do you not tune in next week? Yeah, it doesn't make them a bad football team. Right, right. Or Baltimore's good. Or us any less entertaining and knowledgeable. To I would hope to. not. Right. But, you know, that's, that happens. Uh, but for my partner, Matt Williamson, for Justin Miller here, running the Justin Miller Hotline, uh, for Tyler Vittmeyer here, making sure that our uh, video makes it up on air. And Tyler was with me in uh, Washington yesterday, so Tyler had to uh, hustle to get back here uh, today yeah. as well. I'm Dale Lally. We thank you for listening to this edition of The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. Steelers football happens here. The Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network.